Hello everybody, I'm Elvin Rahimo from Baku, Azerbaijan and uh, I'm going to talk about how to write about your dream university. First of all, I'd like to express my sincere apology that uh, currently it's the holiday time in Azerbaijan and that's why I don't have any blackboard here or any kind of uh, classroom management style. Uh, therefore, uh, I'm going to just uh, do my uh, teaching style on a, on the materials that I have currently at home. All right. First of all, I'd like to show you that these are some of the university brochures and the magazines about the universities. Uh, this is uh, Harvard Univ uh, Harvard. I think it's the university. Yeah, University of Washington, uh, which is located in Seattle. And uh, this is about Macchio University, one of the prestigious university in Canada and this is Duquesne University. Uh, all right. First of all, I'd like to my I'd like my students to brainstorm about what their main criteria are in terms of selecting their best dream university and where they are going to study. And afterwards, I'd like them to discuss these ideas with uh, each other in order to create some other background information about what things that are missing in their essay or in their general point of view because uh, first of all we, uh, as you know there's a common saying that two heads are better than one and th uh, that's why I, I like them firstly to converse with each other in order to find out that what kind of other information are, uh, is available in the classroom and afterwards I'm going to talk about what uh, uh, what type, uh, what parts of the essays should be conducted? And first of all, uh, we're going to talk about the introduction part. That uh, how how we're going to introduce the topic, and why it is important. Why do we have to study at the uh, at the best university according to our best fits? Yeah, it it does have to fit to each others uh, or each of the students uh, gen general requirement because. Even though that you, you you might be qualified for the better universities, but it's not going to be a kind of uh, that you uh, that's the best university for you. The number one university in the world might not be the best university for you because there might be the other types of needs. We're going to discuss these types of situations in the introduction part, and afterwards we're going to smoothly tra transition to body paragraphs. So uh, I'm going to insist my students to write at least. Uh, two paragraphs, two body paragraphs, in order to give their details, the reasons and examples that uh, why they want to study there and what kinds of uh, the opportunities available for them and what about the post-graduation opportunities that how uh, either it's uh, the better fit for their career, uh, career possibilities or how, uh, how they are going to uh, further their education into the PhD or m master's or PhD degree. So we're going to write about these and at last in the conclusion part, which is the last and third part of the essay, we're going to summarize the information that's being provided in the whole essay. And after the summary, we're going to give our recommendation that why it should be the better university for the, uh, for the students, for the other students that are in the same category with the student who has been uh, who has written that uh, essay. And lastly, we're going to talk about the projections or that what what kind of forecast, what kind of uh, uh, prognostication that might be made about that university, that uh, how in the future the possibilities will arise for the other students in the classroom. And I'm going to explain. How are we going to assess the students' uh, essay? So basically, because we are writing for the academic staff, the voice of the essay will be academic, and th that that's quite obvious. Therefore, we're not going to discuss them in detail. And the four criteria are our main measurement style that we're going to use in order to assess our students' essay. First of all, we're going to check out the task achievement that. If the student has written the essay on the base t task, all right. Uh, if the rubric or the prompt is exactly related to the written essay, in that case, that's okay. And 
the number of the words that we're going to require from the students will be 250 to 300, right? This is another requirement. And programming, uh, based on the uh, parts that they say that we've uh, that, that I discussed in the beginning of this uh, lecture, uh, we're going to talk about them as well. All right, this is about the task achievement. If you have written on the given topic, then it's okay. And second of all, we'll have the fluency and coherence criteria. In the fluency criteria, we're going to talk about the, uh, let's say, the connective words, that what kind of connective devices might be made in order to connect the information inside of these sets. For example, instead of uh, repeating the same words like and so many times, we're going to use the other additional words that, uh, in order to make our opinion obvious for the students or for the uh, for our general audience. That, for example, in addition or additionally, furthermore, moreover, incidentally, in the speaking, you can also use what's more or besides. Or if we want to present the reason, in that case, instead of only using the because, we can use due to, due to the fact that, on account of, or since, as. Uh, at the same time, we need to produce some example statements or example sentences of the students in order to make them sure that if uh, whether they have understood the example sentences, how to use those uh, in devices or not. And coherence part is also uh, equally important here because uh, we need to produce the logical connection between the paragraphs, between the ideas in order to convey the information that we want to send to the audience. If it's not logical, in that case, it's going, to be, it's going to be kind of a problem. Therefore, we need to take all these things into consideration. And the third point here is the grammatical accuracy and a range of grammar. Grammatical accuracy is obvious that you know. Uh, for example, we need to use the articles, definite and indefinite articles, properly or subject word agreements should, uh, should be uh, taken into account or let's say the usage of the tenses should be accurate you know and a range of grammar is the point that most students ignore I don't know why the, uh, what the reason of this neglection is but sometimes it's been overlooked uh, that's why we're going to talk about the three types of sentence st structures in the English language Simple sentences, which is formed by subject plus word, and object is optional, you know. Uh, for example, Obama is the first uh, Afro-American president of the United States. Or uh, w then we're going to talk about the com uh, complex sentences, which is about the usage of who, which, that clause. In this case, we can make our simple sentence, uh, convert our simple sentence into a complex sentence. Obama is the first Afro-American universe. Uh, Afro-American president of the United States who created the, let's say, healthcare system, nationwide healthcare system. And then we're going to talk about uh, compound sentence structures, which is formed by means of and, but, so, because these kinds of uh, connective words. And let's give an example about this as well. Uh, Obama is the first Afro-American president of the United States who, uh, who created the nationwide health care system <clears throat> let's add here because because this was the primary need of the American population and lastly finally yet importantly we're going to talk about the vocabulary since this is the academic audience that we're trying to uh, deliver our information that why we need this kind of university to study in the future to be successful in our uh, in, in our career, in our academic life. In this case, uh, we're going to talk about the academic vocabulary, or in other words, less common vocabulary. We need to use the less common vocabulary rather than common vocabulary. For example, um, there are some uh, exclusions here. For example, we need to uh, exclude the informal vocabulary or idioms, phrasal words, some phrasal words, of course. Uh, for example, you know, let me give an example because this is the end of the time. Uh, we're going to uh, we're going to say significant, crucial, or core, major instead of uh, pretty uh, instead of important. That's all. We're going to further discuss the other details.